Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Triton High School and sectional football. On behalf of the Triton community and entire staff and student body of Triton Junior Senior High School, we'd like to welcome Tara Busco as our guest at tonight's contest. Triton Junior Senior High School and Tara Busco are playing this event through an agreement entered into by both schools. As members of the IHSAA, both schools have agreed to abide by the bylaws of the IHSAA to ensure the highest possible standards of conduct during this event tonight. Our officials for tonight's contest are Rob Bryant, Trent Toko, Jason Kessler, Jeff Pavey, and Anthony DeHaven. We ask that all fans and players demonstrate an attitude of good sportsmanship throughout tonight's contest no matter what personal feelings of loyalty they may have toward one team or the other. Disruption of this or any athletic contest will be ground for removal and the possible exclusion from attending future events. Your cooperation is appreciated. Thank you very much. Now, at this time, if you please rise and place the flag in the north end zone. Gentlemen, kindly remove your hats as we will honor America with our national anthem. All right, football fans, it's sectional time here in Indiana as our Triton Trojans, Trojans welcome in the Cherubusco Eagles. And Caden, these last two teams, as I'm Andrew Hare alongside Caden Atkins and the Hall of Famer Ryan Lindler here for the Triton Trojans Sports Network. These two teams, last time they faced off was 2007, that regional championship where Cherubusco won. Of course, they had a tough game against Fairfield last week and Triton, two back-to-back -back heartbreakers to round out the season. Yeah, it's going to be a good game tonight. Both teams are pretty evenly matched. Triton 3-5, and five, Cherubusco 4-3 and three coming into tonight's game. Should have a good one. Right Just going to be who can execute better and play in these conditions that we might have tonight. And coming in, especially coming in that north end zone, so that's where the wind's really coming from here tonight. So when you're facing south, you can really air it out and get going, and you can have the wind in your back to be able to kick the ball. But you look at how this team with Cherubusco, they're well coached. This is a team that historically is very good. I mean, this this group here, I mean, they are a good four and three. They face the maybe a little bit weaker schedule versus ours. So, you know what? We've seen those tougher opponents. This is time where you got to put all that stuff together and really show what the, what you've learned over the season. As Orion pulls up uh, Triton's schedule here, see that 
you know, you started off with a two-game win streak and then lost to a tough Bremen team that came right back and really responded well against Culver. Unfortunately, you go on a two-game losing to get to two really talented teams. But that Knox game, they were there at the end, and it came down to a drive there at the end where they lost it. And then last week you saw Winnemac coming here, and they can't get past that 10-point mark and uh, couldn't quite put, punch it in for two there at the end to uh, win the football game. Yeah, two heartbreakers, as you said. I think they're going to use that as motivation for today's game. They're fired up. They're ready to go out there. It's sectional time, baby. That's all I got to say. And you know how that goes. Two years removed from your senior year, the team that went to the sectional championship two years ago. Last time there was a win for this, these Trojan group in the sectionals. Back to receive now for the Cherubusco Eagles. We're going to have – can't see who's on the far side there. Yeah. As they'll send it back. Nordoff's got it. He's going to stay on his feet and kind of work himself through. He's up on. He's got room. There's a flag on the play on the far sideline. Nordoff goes all the way through, and he'll get brought down. I got a feeling this might be coming back. Yeah, it's going to be a block in the back back there. He wouldn't have thrown it that far back. And that's where they're calling it. That's exactly right. Block in the backs where Cherubusco will get ready to start deep in their own territory. Of course, like Caden, you were seeing that this group runs that wing T offense. It's something we're going to see quite. A, we've seen quite a bit of here the last few weeks, especially working out of the shotgun. This is a group to keep your eye on. I mean, Winnem or excuse me, Cherubusco can really move the ball. Winnemac kind of ran something similar, but this team here is going to execute it a lot better than Winnemac did. Here, that's right. Uh, they'll run the ball, but Cherubusco's quarterback Riley Burroughs, he's just a just a sophomore, but he's very accurate throwing the ball. So when they want to, they will throw the ball with him. He's 69% on the year, 600 yards, that seven touchdowns, only one interception. Line, so look for him to 10, drop back and pass when he can. And we were talking earlier, I mean, you got then you got the Swiss Army knife and Nick Nordoff. Guy, just keep an eye on him, number 45. So here we go. Burroughs out of the backfield is going to go, going to hand it off here near side. And on the carry there was Ethan Hill. As he'll get through, but the Trojan defense did a good job. They do a really good job defending the run. That's where Triton's strengths really are. This, this front has done a great job defending the run. They've really got to really be more disciplined in the passing game, though. But this group here, you're going to see Jerry Busco run the ball, run the ball, kind of get themselves worked up. Then you'll see that pass. I don't, I don't think you're going to see too many passes going north, though. No, that's going to be tough throwing against the wind all night long. Burf out of the shotgun. Going to keep it himself, go right Great up the option. middle, and going to get stopped for a short gain. Third down coming up. That was, that was very good. He Burf read the right read there, but just both defensive linemen for the Trojans just collapsed and left him nowhere to go. And the Trojan defense, you look there along that line with Nate Amson, Cam Shively, Caleb Blimler, and Fairchild. That group up front has done a great job. The linebackers have really done good with Jeremiah Farrell back there in that middle linebacker spot with Amson and Cabrera on either end, and then Keegan Westover back there in the spot. We also have Cam Colt. Cole Shively also playing out there, playing some defensive back with Amari Snyder and Hunter McIntyre for the Trojans. That's group's done a lot better here in recent weeks. And uh, I think We're going to get a flag. And that'll back Busco up. Oh. They're going to call encroachment on the Trojans. Keegan. Yep, Keegan. He kind of made the yeah, lineman move, so. Encroachment. Now make third down a little more manage manageable. So third and eight coming up from their own 10-yard line. That's it. Hill will run in the play for Cherubusco. Of course, Caden and I were talking earlier. Coach Eunice going against his alma mater here tonight. Yep. Cherubusco his, alumni, Rodney Eunice down there. So two wide receivers here to the near side. Burroughs sends one in motion. He's going to keep it on the quarterback, keep it on the option, and their defense is going to – I believe that was Nate Amson in on the tackle. He wrapped up Burroughs and brought him right down. That midline option. I think that was the wrong read. I think Burroughs should have gave that ball, but – I mean, maybe different down there. Yeah, exactly. And I think you're right. I mean, the defense did a good job reading that. Back to kick. Boy, it's hard to see those numbers down there. Yeah. Anthony Shue back to return. That kick's going to kind of take a weird bounce, and it's going to roll all the way down to the 43-yard line is where freshman Cole Shively will bring his offense. We'll see what Coach Eunice draws up here with great starting field position. This is what we kind of saw there in that in that, uh, in that Knox game. This was We got great starting field position. We were starting on their side of the 50 every single time, and that's what you want to see. The field position battle is going to be big tonight because neither of these teams, are their strong suit is both defense. So if you can get the ball where you want it, on the other side of the ball where bus go, on Busco's side of the ball for the Trojans here, you're going to have success tonight. Shyly to work under center. Trey Shue back there. Hunter McIntyre goes in motion. Going to go to the diesel, and he'll rumble forward, and he'll get stopped. And you guys, 
Kane just said the Busco defense pushes yeah, him back for a yard. Back uh, he might have got back to the line of scrimmage. Yep. No gains. And right there, that's exactly right. You saw, you called it there. That defense, they really stood tall right there. And that chair Busco, they're tough. And we were talking about that earlier. You look at number 51, Hunter Bionski. Leads the team in tackles, sacks, tackles for loss, fumble recoveries. He's going to be a monster now. He's playing D-tackle, lining up right across from the center. And he's a big dude, and he does a real good job up front, as Caden said. Shiva now second and ten. Going to go back to Trey Shue. He's got an opening. Bounces off the defender. Goes into Farrell, and he'll rumble forward for a good gain on second down. down Brings up third down and short. Trey Shue over 400 yards game coming into the night's seven, game. Third third. Second leading rusher on the team. 89 yards in the first half the other or last week against Winnemac, that young man, we call him the diesel for a reason. He can just lower his, his head and just drive right forward. So third down and three. I thought that was kind of a short spot. Got a pair of shoes in the backfield with McIntyre here on the near side. Yep. They're going to go right to Trey Shoe, and he'll push forward. He might be close to a first. He might just be short of a first Trey down. Shoe. As the mist is starting to come again, we're going to see a lot of rain here tonight. I think our – yep, they're going to give it to him first down. So there's a first down for the Trojans. They convert first first down of the ball game. First and ten for Triton. Of course, want to thank our sponsors here tonight, Farmers Drainage and the Workman family. We'll have more on them coming up here later. But, Caden, you look right here. We talked about importance in that first drive, especially that wind coming to your back. As you can kind of see it in your screen there where that mist is really blowing across the field there from the north. If you're going to score, you got to do it in that south end zone. If you want to throw the ball, if you want to kick the ball, you got to score going south. Because if you try to kick towards this wind and the mist, you're it's not going to have it, any luck. It's going to cut it down. First and ten for Shively. Shoe's going to go up the middle. Nowhere to go. Hill initially in there on the tackle. And that'll bring up second down. Hey, Shoe's back here. Lives as a yard back to the 34. So second down and 11 second coming up. 11. You know, we saw that on the first play. They didn't quite go nowhere, but then he found a way to lower his head and just drive right through, and he's had a big gain on second down as Shoe will come out. So what's it like, real quick, what's it like playing out there in a wet game like this, and how do you how do you hang on to the ball? How, what kind of things do you prepare for the week to be able to play in this kind of weather? Playing in the rain sucks. It is the worst condition to play in. I'd rather play in the snow. The ball is wet. You can't throw the ball. It's hard to hold on to it. You just got to keep both hands on at all times. Number Get 10, six points of contact Anthony if you can on that ball. Area. Looks like Anthony Shue got about four yards on the carry there. The freshman done real good job this season. Coming in with 363 yards. yards on the ground, leading the team in rushing touchdowns with five. Not a bad way to start off your freshman campaign. He had some really electrifying runs there earlier in the season. One problem with him, he fumbled quite a bit these last couple of weeks. He's got to have to work on that if he wants to continue to be better at the varsity level. And that's something I guarantee you're going to see. This is a young man that wants to he's, – he's a very mentally tough kid. This freshman and sophomore group is going to be really good here in the coming years for Triton. McIntyre motion, fumbled snap. Shively's got it. That's going to bring up third down and – or fourth down and long. That's the – it's because of the rain right there. Shively couldn't get a good grip on the ball. That's going to be a problem. Watch the center quarterback exchange tonight. And that interchange is going to be so important with the – especially that center to quarterback handoff for both sides. Cabrera's out there, done a good job punting the ball this season. I think they're going to go for it. Thirty Punting from the 34 doesn't quite seem right. I don't know. That's just me. So Cabrera, but he's done a good job punting this year, punting, really pinning guys inside that 10-yard line. He's done a good job. The wind's to his back. Fake maybe. Nope. And now it just about gets blocked. He gets ran. Allen's going to take a Cherubusco bounce. They'll start their own 20-yard line. You know, Caden, with all that rain going on out there, draining, getting that field drain is going to play a big, important role here tonight. Uh, you would hope so. Do you know how important it is for maintaining your watershed for your field there, Caden? you know how important that is? I do not. I'm not a farmer. Please explain. <laughs> in order to maximize the uses of your field and potential yield of your crops, water drainage plays a key part in that process. If you're looking to improve the, your, the drainage in your fields and maximizing your field's potential, contact Craig Holly at Farmers Drainage, specializing in system-drained acreage. And, of course, our own Kenny Barnhart. He's a customer. Yeah. <laughs> and he talked pretty highly of him. We'll have that graphic up there for you later. That's going to be a direct snap there. Nick and Nondorf. Nondorf with the carry. Made some guys miss in the backfield. When we were talking about that. We kind of call him like that Swiss Army. Now, there's a lot of things he does well, kind of our version of a 
Lucas Cabrera is a guy who can really just really open up the defense, really spread you out. The guy, he's got a lot of moves. You, can, you saw him there. He can really take off and go, and there's a lot of things. He's going to be a special – he's a special player. Yeah, he's the second-leading rusher on this Cherry Busco team, first-leading receiver, five total touchdowns on offense. So he's going to be one to look out for tonight. Another thing, Triton's got to break down and wrap up or else – Nondorf's going to break him down all night. Nondorf back there in kind of the wildcat formation. Nice block there by Cherubusco on the outside as he'll rumble forward. It'll be just That's short. Westaver was in there, but that was a good job by the bookend for Cherubusco to really push him back and seal off that edge. That was some good blocking up front for the Eagles. Third and one coming here as you see the rain starting to come down in bands now. This is why I'm glad I'm up here, not down there. Number two, Riley Burroughs actually has two receptions on the year, so look out for that possibly. So Nordorf back there. He's going to keep it. Fairchild's got to beat. There's Nate Amson. Nordorf's still on his feet, and he's going to have to have some help. And on the tackle there is Fairchild as Nate Amson initially made the contact. That'll bring up fourth down, and Cherubusco's going to send out the punt team. Now, Anthony Shu, if you're back here, back there is him to receive. You got to hang on that ball tonight, man. It's going to be slippery. You got to really read that ball really well. Nondorf back to kick it. That's going to be a wobbler. kicking wobbler back Don't there. Shoe's going to take it there. Just past fifty, and he fumbles it. Never take off of one bounce. Never there you go, Cole bounce. Irvine with the possession saving tackle or possession saving falls right on the ball. That was a good play there by uh, Irvine to really pay attention and jump on the ball. You take it off of one bounce, you're asking for trouble because it's much different than clean than feeling it cleanly. At that is terrible. Four, so um, <laughs> on the recovery for but luckily, so you said Irvine was there. They're, they're going to start the ball. They're on 49. And right there, we saw that kind of last week. Anthony kind of was gambling there with the ball that bounced around the 50 yard line. Was almost touched it, or he went ahead and touched it. That was just, that's a dangerous play. McIntyre, the senior, the accelerate all the way through, gets a good carry on first down. Triton's a leading rusher. Good start. Five-yard gain. McIntyre, the ball And player. McIntyre was a guy who can get going. Has made a couple players tied up there. Second down coming up. To the Eagles, 46-yard Irvine line. will come in. West Haver will check out for Game the Trojans. Five, second and five. In a defensive battle here in the, this first quarter here. Of course, we found out earlier tonight, Southwood will get the opportunity to play football. That's good, good for them, a team that's – Destined to go to Lucas Oil. Eight, no, they, they'll be tough to beat. Shiva in her center, going to go back to McIntyre on the far side. Farrell's the lead blocker, gives him some space. McIntyre all the way through, almost to a first down. Or McIntyre first just down. Just short. And it's going to be third down and short. Oh, they're going to give it to him. Yeah. Move first the chains. Down Two first downs on both trips of their drives. Hunter McIntyre, McIntyre leading the way here on this one. McIntyre, the senior, leads the team in rushing attempts and rushing yards. And Hunter's that high-motor guy, real good leader on this team, a guy who just doesn't quit. You can knock him down, he's going to find a way to get back up and come back and kick you in the mouth. And Hunter's rarely off the field. He plays offense, defense, and he's on most special teams as well. He's a great leader on this team, a group, great group of seniors for this Trojan group. As McIntyre goes in motion, gets the toss. Joe overflows. He's got room. Has a blocker and gets a nice carry on first down the accelerator, McIntyre finding his way through. Watch the play here. Did a good job opening up the outside. Good Lucas Cabrera with a key block really did a good two. job tying up the defender. McIntyre, big carry on first down. Second and two coming up. Thanks to Tech Support for getting the replay all squared away this afternoon. <laughs> of course, Tech Support shopping tonight. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I'm glad I'm in the press box. So, <laughs> Limler to snap to Shively. He's going to go up to Trey Shue, and the big diesel is going to find his way for a first down. Big carry there Trey for Trey Shue, the sophomore, coming up big there. Second leading rusher on the team. As Gaten said, 430 yards and four touchdowns on 77 attempts this year. You know, Trace is not that lightning guy you're going to see, but you talk about I don't see anybody faster than five yards than that young man, and when he gets downhill, he gets downhill in a hurry. He is the most powerful back Triton has. He could be playing a, a lineman at other schools, but Triton likes to have him for these short yardage you situations. Know, kind of almost reminds you a little bit of an Ethan Berry almost, 
Just that big, powerful back Ooh. is. Very good play. McIntyre's got some space. McIntyre goes all the way through. As Devin Clark there to make the touchdown saving tackle, McIntyre trying to be first and 10. Inside the 15-yard 15. Inside the 15 line. 12-yard line. 15. 18-yard. 18 18 yards. 18 yards on the carry. 18 yards on the carry and a first down. But Hunter McIntyre, as you see it there, he's getting going. And this he could be a weapon in this ballgame. If he can get going early and the offense can really open up those lanes, he'll make you pay. If you saw there, that was just a counter play. They'd faked it to shoe. And you, you saw three Cherry Busco players dive down onto him, and they just gave it to McIntyre on that reverse knee, that wide open lane. Ames and Cabrera in motion. Shively to snap, first and 10. Goes back to McIntyre, tries to find a blocker. Shoe out front, or Farrell out front. There it's going to be. McIntyre reaches, touchdown from 12 yards out. Touchdown. Big Blue wrecking crew strikes first. Hey, McIntyre, 12 yards. Look at the replay here. Look at the blocking out front. Watch Farrell really pull out and get up there and really seal off the edge. And McIntyre just kicks on the Jets, outruns Nordoff, and gets there for the nice touchdown. And the camera guy was down there, and he got that picture. Good block, too, by Cole <laughs> Irvine. Wide receiver blocking goes unnoticed all the time. Irvine led his man over to where he's basically playing safety and just eliminated him out of the play. McIntyre to snap. Smith to hold. Shively to kick now. Holds good. Kicks up. And it splits the upright, 7-0 Trojans leading here in the opening game of the sectional 44 between the Cherubusco Eagles and the Triton Trojans looking good here early on. I want to thank our other sponsors here tonight with the Workman family. I want to thank them for their sponsorship here tonight, Ken, Lindsey, Dante, and Malachi Workman for their support of Triton football for tonight's broadcast. So, Caden, you saw there, like we were talking earlier, you got to get on the board first. And that right there, Triton found a way after that first – uh, run. Right, they really just, drive, that first drive kind of stalled, but yet they came right back down, and this, that team, Hunter McIntyre led the charge. You, you, you hit it right on the head. Hunter McIntyre had some explosive runs, but it's all set up by the gives to Trey Shue early on that first drive that did stall, but now Cherubusco's thinking, all right, 32's in, he's going to get the ball. That's going to open up guys like Lucas Cabrera and Hunter McIntyre to swing those outside because everyone's going to crash in to try to tackle Trey Shue. Exactly. And you kind of sit there and you, like I said, hit the nail on the head there, but the starting field position has been great. They've started from just past the 50 and then just in just about the 43-yard line on their first drive. Good starting field position, short field. That's going to play, like I said, that's going to play a big key factor here tonight. Now they've started from Cherry Busco's 43 and their own 49. Nordoff and Hill back to receive as Lucas Cabrera gets to kick it with the window. He's back. Just inside a minute to go here in this first quarter. Triton leads. Cabrera sends a line drive kick. Nordoff's going to take it. He's gonna, they're going to take the reverse. He's going to take it up the far sideline. Kind of cuts, makes a man miss. He's still on his feet. He cuts back in, and he'll get pushed out of bounds there by Dominic Smith. Good field position. Busco looking strong. Both special teams plays. This is the group that will make you play returning-wise because we saw the first to return by Nordoff do a really good job, and then you just saw it there again. Real athletic, kind of shook off the defender, did a real good job following his blockers and got, got the ball upfield in a hurry. I think uh, all of Triton over here bit on that fake reverse, so it ended up leaving 10 on, I think, six guys over there. They keep doing that. They'll have success with that. Irv back in the shotgun, hill in motion. He's going to keep it, looks downfield. And Farrell had his hands on it, the fridge. Hands were a little cold on that one. He couldn't quite bring it in. Farrell had an interception. Watch him here. He goes right back across. Farrell sleeps on it, and he had it. He had an interception in his hands and just dropped it. Just like he dropped his mouthpiece on the end of the play there, too. I probably would, too, if I was that mad <laughs> if I missed the interception. I've been there. <laughs> Second down and 10 now from their own 38-yard line. As Burf goes back to work out of the shotgun, back there on his right hip. You can see Wyatt Marks. Keep an eye on that young man, too. Marks is going to get the carry, as we just said, right up the middle. Lucas Cabrera hanging on to him, and eight M's in there to finish him off. His third down in manageable coming up. Wyatt marks the ball carrier. Farthest chair, Busco has made it tonight. Marks a junior. 655 yards coming into this game on the ground. Three Except touchdowns. Seven yards to the he has five. more rushing yards than... Anyone else third in this game is not even close. And that was good blocking up front for Cherubusco. Really opened up the lanes for Marks to get through. Speedy soft or Speedy Junior, as you said. That guy going to have a bright future. This Cherubusco team is young, very young. I wrote down a couple key stat leaders, and I only had one or two seniors on that whole list. And number 89, Brayton Gordon, and number 26, Seth Abel. 
couple receivers and defensive backs out there. So look for those tonight. And Coach Sade and the Busco Eagles will take that one into the first into the first quarter. Triton leads seven to nothing. And I think that was a smart play there, not trying to run another play. With a big third down that can kind of tip your momentum. You're now working that south end zone, which is going to be everybody's favorite way to go tonight with that wind really blowing hard there from the north. But to me, this is the kind of football, this is, the, this is how football is supposed to be played, man, the rain and the, the defensive battle. I know everybody doesn't like playing in the rain, but still at the same time. Everyone says you want to play in the rain. No, you don't. I've never <laughs> understood that. It's not fun. You're just slipping and sliding everywhere. You can't break down to make a tackle. You try to make a break on the ball, you fall down. It's not fun. <laughs> I don't. It's not fun. It is not fun. <laughs> oh, boy, the peanut gallery is getting loud over there. <laughs> I'd rather play in 80-degree weather. Okay. Yeah, you're exactly well, right. Well, that's why I broadcast. That's why I'm up here. <laughs> you guys can enjoy I can say that because I'm going to stay up here all the time. So, <laughs> Busco really traveled well here tonight. Of course, fun fact for Busco. Our cheerleaders are not here, by the way. That's why I've got this other camera. <laughs> I thought our cheerleaders are going to be here. You know, I wonder if my dad's listening because that's the only town I've ever seen him get lost driving in. Sure, we that's one stoplight. That's what I said. I, I, we, they're, they're like it forks there in the middle of town, and we, we needed to go left, and he kept going right. We couldn't find this like house getting, we were going. I, I don't know what his deal was. It's like getting lost in bourbon. I, <laughs> I don't know if he's watching, so I can say it. Marks gets the ball, and he'll rumble forward. Second Short. effort not there. Fourth down coming up. Great job by Caleb Lemler not giving up on that play. He came from behind to make that tackle. If you're Paul Sade, you kick it. I think you go for it here. No, yeah. Good field position. Is that wind blowing into your face and that mist going right into your eyes? Burrow's going to go to work out of the shotgun. Keep an eye for the hard count. Yep, that's like Two that's wide receivers here to the near side. One tight end out left. Hill in motion. Going to go to Marks, and Marks is going to – Oh, he's going to be short. short of the ball. His helmet got past her. They might be generous there They're on the far sideline. He is short. He was short. And Busco gets the first down. Wyatt Marks picks up the two yards. So Cherubusco converting another first down. Cherubusco first down. As they're starting to move the ball, as we talked earlier. Try and move the ball really well in those first two drives, working with the wind to their back. It's going to be an uphill climb if you're going to be working north. We haven't seen – we've seen one pass, and it was almost intercepted by Jeremiah Farrell. So the both lines lining up. Perf to work out of the shotgun. You'll see him working back there mostly. Marks on his right hip. He's going to fake there it. it looking left as a guy downfield, wide open. As he'll take off and go, gets brought Six. down there by Amari Snyder. Seth Abel. And Seth Abel, the senior tight end, gets down through. That was a good play there. You saw Burruff really open up, kind of threw that ball in that wind, with, like I said, with that wind to your back. So we're going to see that ball really get thrown. And Triton needs to buckle down on that passing defense is where they really struggled this year. Uh, that's just a lack of discipline. They didn't watch the tackles pop up instead of push out. And so they all blitzed the like it was a run, just left Abel wide open. <laughs> Appreciate everybody watching here. 149. Going to go to Marks. Marks has got the outside. He'll rumble forward for a pretty good gain there on first down. Wyatt Marks, the ball carrier. Of course, our broadcast would not be possible without our sponsors for tonight. Exactly. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you to Farmers Drainage and the Workman family. We'll have some more on them here and a couple more graphics as the game goes on. But like I said, without them, we would not be able to do this here tonight. Really appreciate their involvement in Triton Sports. As here we go, second down and seven. As Burf go to work out of the shotgun, like we said, you're going to see him back there quite a bit. Two wide receivers split to the near side. Hill kind of started to go, but Marks is going to get it and rumble forward. Yeah, Looks like Landon Limler, and they're on the tackle. Right tackle. They could have gotten a false start on that was on uh, Hill there. Yeah, Hill. Thank Cause you. Because he, he kind of just kind of stuttered, kind of getting going, didn't kind of like, change his mind. And you can't you can't bob and weave like that. And he took a little bit of a false step. He's got to go if he's going to go. Three yards to the eleven yard line. So defense needs to stand tall here. They've Third done big moments four. this season. Burf to work out of the shotgun. There's there driving towards the end zone. As Rinker's going to go in motion, he's going to pass. He pulls it back, drops it back to Rinker. Not there. Incomplete fourth down coming up. He had a lane to the end zone there. If he could have completed that pass because he had a blocker in front of him. Take out a safety, you're in the end zone. Seven points. 
hate to see that for Chair Busco. Do you have heated gloves? Are you? Well, the problem is I can't wear them because I can't control the camera. With them. <laughs> They're for halftime, I guess. They're for halftime. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Burf now to work back out of the shotgun. Marks on his right hip, fourth down and four. This could be a big fourth down right here. Marks can get that ball and run up to there for Busco. Burf's going to roll right. He's looking, going to drop it back corner of the end zone. Too high for Nordiff, and that's incomplete. Cherubusco turns it over on downs. Triton takes over on their own 11-yard line. Pass intended for Nondorf, incomplete. So Nondorf can't quite get there. But you kind of look. I mean, he really let his receiver just rolls Best out. Limmer's bearing down on him. He just down. threw that ball a little too high for Nondorf. Right idea to kind of go there to that back corner, but Shively with the good defense and Snyder there as well. But like I said, he Brooke, had he had he had six points there, just kind of overthrew, but that win could have grabbed a hold of that ball and really pushed it too. He had 89. Uh, Brayton Gordon, he was running a little drag route as tight end back across the field. He had a stop and planted, went back towards the middle of the field. That was six points, and they tried to force it to the end zone. Shy, they going to McIntyre. He'll go for it, but he'll get stopped in the pile. Busco will push back as the rain comes down in bunches again. Keep an eye on that. That's going to be happening a lot tonight. Loses a yard back to the 10-yard line. So second, second down and 11 coming up. Of course, I'm Andrew O'Hara alongside Cade Natkins in the Hall of Fame. Ryan Lindner here, Ryan Lindner here for the Triton Trojan Sports Network. Tonight for this sectional 44 football game, and tomorrow we'll be heading to regionals for volleyball at 10.30 in the morning. Right and early. Girls play the Couts team. The Couts Phillies. Yes. That's what I thought. I didn't want to say it, though. Penalty flag. And I think encroachment. Encroachment on Cherubusco, according to the far line judge. Encroachment against Cherubusco. So a big penalty there helps out the Trojans on second down. Moves the ball out to the 15, and it's second and six. So second down and six. A little more manageable, Caden. My, you know, my math is right. But for Triton, like I said, the, like I said, the last two weeks leading in the fourth quarter. They've got to play all the way through tonight. I mean, this if you this is big boy football. When you want to play the best, you get, or be the best, you got to beat the best. And tonight, you got to play all the way through. I keep thinking about two weeks ago against Knox. We saw a really, really good football team for three weeks, and then that fourth quarter it just kind of all fell apart. I, they got to put a full game together, and it's playoff time. You don't have any more games guaranteed after this one right now. You got to leave it all out there. I mean, and like we said, we got to – Handful of seniors in like a Hunter McIntyre, Lucas Cabrera, Keegan Westaver, uh, Caleb Limler, Jeremiah Farrell, and Nate Amsden. That senior group, these guys here, you got to know they're going to put that work in. Plus, with some of these underclassmen like a Cam Shively and Fairchild and Cole Shively, you want to see these guys put the work in, and you know darn well this week they put that work in. They want this one bad after last week. It was a heartbreaker, and like two weeks in a row, you got to find a way to mount them to right the ship, and I think this is where you do it. Shively going to. Plow so forward two, to the 20. So, it's going to be just short. So the Trojans on all three of their drives, if they, so it'll be fourth down. So it must have been just short. Just short yeah. of the first down marker at the Needs to get about the 20 and a half. The ball is at the 20. Fourth so About the nose of the football. So run the same play again. As you'll watch, you might see a good push, and you see a good push up front there by Bianski. Keep an eye on that. Bianski is a very good player for being a junior. He's got a whole other year to wreak havoc. Shively trying to get him to go with the hard Hart count, but we're going to get – He got him. Number 14, Ethan Hill. He jumped, forced Triton to jump. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the right call. call. Offside. That's the right call. I saw it. So as you saw there, because I kind of saw – the guard really kind of the, for Triton really step up there. I thought for sure, but he was, but he was. That was a good job by Cole Shiley, who's really gotten better with that card count. He had some moments here earlier season where he could draw some teams off sides. Big change there for the Trojans. Give him a first down. First down and ten from their own twenty-four. Six forty remaining here in this rainy second quarter. Pioneers up sixteen zero on Delphi, and that's in the first quarter. How about Adam Central Fremont? You have score for that game. So first and ten now from their own twenty-five. Shyly goes under center. Oh, here comes the pressure, and there you see Bianski come right through. He really shot the, really did a good job shooting the gap and getting through. He bent past his defender and brought down the quarterback in a hurry. 
He came into this game with 18 and a half tackles for loss. That gives him up 19 and a half on the year. That is just insane. He is in there on every single play, it seems. You know, with all that size, but you watch him. He does a good job fighting with his hands, does a real good job getting himself in position. Like I said, only a junior. This young man as a senior is going to be a wrecking, a one-man wrecking crew up front. End of one, Adam Central, 19, Fremont, zero. Okay. Winner of that game will play the winner of this game next week in sectionals. Okay, incomplete, as they say, Shively's arm was going forward. With an incomplete pass, brings saw, a third down. I think that was Trojan. two weeks ago, so I'll call like that go the wrong way for the Trojans. So third and 15. Can't quite really put that ball for grabs to air it out because that wind's going to push it right back to your face. I think he goes something short here. I think the rain has uh, begun to slow down. I don't think it stopped quite yet. But Now, if they're going to throw it, it's going to be a lot of screen passes to Hunter and – Maybe a quick slant to Lucas, but I don't see much other Nate than that. Nate Amson's cutting oh, right in. There's a slant wide open. Nate Amson reads it. He's still on his feet. Nate Amson, the senior, driving through. He's got a first down and more all the way through. Nice play by Nate Amson. When I saw him over there, you kind of had to think that slant was going to work. Really opened it up for him. He was just breaking tackles. Watch here. Shively reads it well, has gotten rid of the last second, but Amson, there's one broken tackle. There's two. There's three. Stiff arm still going, and then it took. And the Trojan first down. Cameron Rinker to come back and bring him down. Great play there for the senior on tight end. If Shively held that ball for half a second longer, he was getting taken down by Brayton Gordon in the backfield. He was ready for the sack. Got to have some comic relief. But you, one thing you're going to be happy about there is how Cole Shively really stood in that pocket and made a play with pressure bearing down. That's one thing he's kind of struggled with, but yet he stepped into that throw, Caden, and delivered it right on the money. And then, you know, you'll see his younger quarterbacks can't quite, don't like throw it, throw their guy open. They kind of throw it where they're at. Yeah. But he threw it where he was going to be and really led Nate Amson right there in that, caught him right in stride. That was a perfect play there from a quarterback to tight end exchange. Good job by Amson to hold on to that wet ball. I know you got gloves on, but when that ball is wet, the gloves really don't mean anything. <laughs> so second down and eight coming here following the Trey Shoe run. Four and a half to go here in the first half. Triton leading seven nothing. As they started for the farthest back they have here tonight. Going to go out to Anthony Shue. Shue's hanging on to it. He rumbles forward. Anthony Shue with the first down and more late flag coming in. Block in the back. Going to get a block in the back possibly on the Trojans. Oh, they're going to call a hold. Corner to our back judge. As Keegan Westaver shaking up. That's a big loss if Keegan can't come back into this game. Starter on both ways of the ball, middle linebacker and receiver. So Eric Callahan works his way out, the athletic director, and Keegan Westaver and Payne over there on that far sideline. Really kind of watching that ankle. He really battled that ankle injury earlier this season. Did you get that on replay? Maybe we can see I it. I don't know, no. So why they take a break there is they'll tend to him. Kate, you know, like we were talking earlier, how important that drainage is here, especially with the rain, and you want to maximize your field's potential. Get a hold of them over there at Farmer, Farmer's Drainage, specializing in system drained acreage. Now, you kind of look there, as we talked about, this was during sectional basketball time, but this right here is one uh, of our very I'm own. I'm not sure when that picture was taken, but we well, used it Well, we used it for sectionals. <laughs> but uh, as our own Kenny Barnhart using that as a customer, as Wes here is walking out, starting to put some weight on that ankle. You know that Keegan's a tough dude. If he's going to find a way to get back in this ball game, he will. But hate to see that as a senior who's really battled from that injury. Holding, Keegan's a tough dude. That holding going to negate that run for Shue, push him all the way back to second and 11 from the 41. Especially when you're working on that wind, they're kind of getting that ball to really move, especially working right to left. Those, those penalties are going to kill you. Really feel for Keegan down there. Senior, you hate they have to go out this way. Irvine here near side. Going to go to McIntyre. He'll shake off one defender still on his feet. Hunter McIntyre goes through. He's going to get walled there. I believe that was Rinker in on the tackle there at the end. Laying the kind of the punishing blow on McIntyre. Third down and long coming up. Picks up two yards. Third and nine. Like we said earlier, in the last 35 years, the – one meeting between these two teams, and that was the regional championship, and that would have been 
the year after I graduated high school. You know, I did get Keegan going down there. I didn't realize I, I'll play here. No. Like I said, hope he's okay as they're really looking at that right ankle. Amari Snyder, and now this could be an interesting matchup. Miss Snyder, a lot of speed and quickness. Short strides when it's raining. You don't want to. Shyly going back to Nate Amson. He's not the work in the trouble, but he'll slip. Good catch there. So fourth and long coming up, and that's going to send the punt team out with Lucas Cabrera kicking into the wind. Now Lucas has got a pretty good leg. So we kind of watch here the shoe. Watching Keegan here. Yep, shoe just rolls up underneath of him. And that right there, especially with it's cold like that, those those pains are going to be a lot worse than what they would be in the when it's warm out. Nondorf back to return. Long drive for the Trojans. Over six minutes with the ball here in the second quarter. Got to get drive. moving here. Ten seconds to get lined up. As Cabrera back to kick. Nondorf and Rinker back to return. High snap. Cabrera's got to step into it. And blocked up front Oops. by Bianski. He's going to pick it up. And Chara Busk is going to get great starting field position following the Lucas Cabrera blocked punt. Cabrera you kind of watch that snap being a little too high. Lucas had to kind of walk back and step into it. Really opened up space for Bianski to come through and block that kick. There's a 15-yard line. A gift for Chara Busk there. Now they're going to start, I think, around the 15-yard line. I didn't quite see the spot of the ball, but. And the Eagles with momentum with two and a half to go in the second quarter. You've got to believe they're finding pay dirt on this drive. Yep, start at the 15. As they moved Ball it well in their last drive, the wind to their back. The just missed an incomplete pass in the, tuck, in the end zone. As Bruff now works out of the shotgun. Sent a man in motion RPO. back across the middle. Oh, and Shively was there, almost got a hand on it as the pass was intended for Cullen Blake. They went right in the middle of the field, right, right, right where Keegan usually would have been occupying that area. As Caden said, those run pass options, how do you as a defensive back read those? I mean, that I mean, NFL guys are still struggling with that. How do you read that as a defensive back? You have to read your key. You have one thing to focus on, and that's the guy in front of you. If you see that tackle pop up, even for a little bit, you're thinking pass all the way. So you just got to read Nondorf's your key. got outside. Jeremiah Farrow, the fridge, freezes in in the backfield. Third down and long coming up. Nondorf, Jeremiah Farrell really keyed in on Nondorf, got through there, and froze him there. The fridge comes up Jeremiah big with that big Farrell. blue wrecking crew defense. Third down and long coming up. And Farrell Third done such a great job leading tackler. 19. 40 solo tackles on the year, 72 for the team on the year. Jeremiah has been a one-man wrecking crew back there in that linebacker department. So Burf out of the back. Now the shotgun, two wide receivers here to the left side. Penalty flag. All start. They're going to call a false start on the Eagles, 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 and that'll Eagles move them back. Eagles. Third down and longer. So third and 19. It'll be third and 19. From the 24. So that good field position kind of went bye-bye real quick for Chair Busco. With but when you got a strong win the way you do to your back, and Burroughs has got a pretty good arm. I mean, that can open up those guys downfield. So if you're those safeties, you got to be ready to rock and roll back there and really key in on your. You don't get any yards here. Do you send Rosie Stevens, the freshman, out to kick from this, uh, from the 24? We saw mm -hmm. him hit from the 25 earlier today. Yep. In warm ups. Hill goes through. Burroughs looking left. Going to throw it short. Yes. Good and tackle. that looks. Oh, Tyler Good Amsterdam tackle. for a moment. But nice job there to slow him up. As they'll push him out of bounds, fourth down and long coming up. Yeah, I think you're down with a minute to go. I think you take a shot at the end zone here. Yeah, that'd be my guess. Maybe a screen pass, yeah, get some blockers out, let a guy make a pin. Watch Nondorf. That's who I want to go to on this situation here. Yes, he'll bring the call in. And Nondorf, like I said, kind of their Swiss Army knife. One minute to go here. He Trojans just, lead. He is just like Lucas. Runs, uh, catches the ball, punts. <laughs> Let's see if he does a kickoff duties, too. He's here in the near side slot. So he gets set here. 45 seconds and counting. Burruff going to roll right. Here comes the pressure. Burruff in trouble. Nate Amson's there, and he'll have to throw it away. Turnover on downs. Trojans get it with 36 seconds. We're going to get a late flag on the play. Uh, grounding. I don't think they're going to call a receiver in the area. In high school, you can't just get out of the pocket. You also have to have a receiver in the area. Uh, that's a questionable call if that is what it is. Yep, they're going to call intentional grounding on Cherubusco. I believe they're going to call it turnover on downs. Yep. 
That's right. Triton takes over on offense. So tough break for the Eagles, who looked primed to run that ball down. A couple breaks for the Trojans, but a good couple very good stands in that Jeremiah Farrell tackle there in the backfield. Like I said, it's been a fast and furious first half. Trojans take back over. I would think so. So Triton's going to start with the ball, I think, at the 36. I think they add on 10 yards with the penalty on the loss of downs if it's accepted. Intention yeah, of pen. grounding nope. from the okay. side of the foul. And where I came prepared. It came, the analytics guy started bringing his pen. We've, we've, we've got you trained. I even brought a folder with a paper inside of it today. Exactly. I think I'm a professional or something. Boy. So 36.8 to go here in the second quarter. Triton leads 7-0 over Cherubusco here. This is kind of what I figured this game might look like. It's going to be a defensive battle. Paul the, Irvine out there has 10 yards of leverage on his defender. McIntyre gets through, slips up, rolls forward for a handful of downs. McIntyre across the 40 to the 42, gain of five. So gain of five as the clock five. continues to run. If you're Coach Eunice, do you just try to run the clock out here? Because, I mean, you get it back after halftime. I want to take one shot, but I'm, I'm greedy. <laughs> you're greedy. Yeah, I'm greedy. I know. I want to take a shot. They don't even have to run another play. And like you said, they're giving Irvine a lot of cushion there on that far side. They got four deep out here, so I don't think they're going to allow it. I think Diesel's going to get the here. They're going to go back to McIntyre on the far side. He's got some blockers up front. Time's expired. McIntyre gets four for a first down and a block in the back. Block in the back, back probably on the Trojans. Holding block in the back, it's not going to matter. And that is not a good sight for the Trojans. It's Farrell's slow to get Jeremiah up. Jeremiah Farrell, their leading tackler. Pulling guard on offense, that'd be another big loss for the Trojans if King Westford can't come back There's two either. seniors down. That middle linebacker department's very depleted because you got to run an Anthony Shoe back there now. That's Farrell not getting up. Oh, no. Hope he's okay. Jeremiah's been very keen a lot of moments this season. We saw him get through on punt coverage. He gets through, and, you know, Jeremiah's a tough dude. I mean, he, he's your high motor, and you talk about a leader. You look it up in the dictionary, Jeremiah Farrell's picture is right there. This has to hurt Coach Eunice more than anything because he doesn't have to run a play there. And now he's got to kind of think about that. I know Coach Eunice is thinking that right now. It's going to be a big loss for the Trojans. So they're going to. He's okay. Maybe win knocked out. I don't know so what happens. That's happened, the wow. end of the first half. Farrell comes out. Yards. From the 49. And that'll be the end of the first one, half. Trojans leave 7-0. Triton gets the ball back at halftime. Want to take one more chance and thank our other sponsor here tonight, the Workman family. First and 10 for the, Trojan. oh, the Workman no. family would like to wish call the Triton Trojans the best of what luck in the sectional. The call Time was back. on Chair Busco, so they're going to give oh, them another so gonna play. Oh, they're going to give them one more play here. I put a question mark on my play sheet I don't there. know. Did Farrell go back out there? No, Must he did not. Okay. I don't think so. Shively's going to roll out. Here comes the pressure, and he's just going to hang on to it and drop. End of the first half now. Yeah, there we go. But as we finally get that straightened out, I want to thank Ken, Lindsay, Dante, and Malachi Workman for their support of Triton football in tonight's broadcast here on the Triton Trojan Sports Network. And as you see there, and it said best of luck in the sectional. Really appreciate the Workman family and their support here tonight. And with that being said, we're going to take a break here at halftime. Here from the Trojan Trundra, I'm Andy O'Hara with Caden Atkins and Ryan Limler. We'll be back after halftime here on the Triton Trojan Sports Network.
All right, welcome back, Triton Trojan fans. Andy here alongside Caden Atkins in the Hall of Famer, Ryan Limler, here for the Triton Trojan Sports Network. As we're live here from the Trojan Tundra, as the Trojans lead, and want to thank our sponsors, Farmers Drainage tonight, specializing in system drained acreage. Can get a hold of Craig Hawley over there. And also the Workman family for their sponsorship here tonight. They want to wish the Triton Trojans the best of luck in the sectional. Ken, Lindsay, Dante, and Malachi I appreciate their sponsorship here tonight. Looking back, Caden, as far as stat leaders in there, you look at uh, what stands out for me is Cole Shively, two of three for 22 yards. Cole had real high percentage throws. He did a good job kind of throwing that football there, kind of thrown into the – he was thrown into the wind there, as you kind of saw there. But McIntyre, eight carries, 55 yards on the ground and a touchdown. And eight Ams, and we saw him with that big – uh, reception there on third down, working back in. You were down there at halftime in the locker room. What was the what was kind of the feeling in that locker room? And then boys are ready to go. Uh, Coach Eunice gave him a good old speech, <laughs> made me a little fired up, ready to go. But uh, now they, Coach Eunice said, Chair Busco is going to give them their best punch right now. They got to be ready to go, ready to take it, and, and they got to fight back. You expect Coach said eight years at Cherubusco, 58 wins. This guy here is going to come right back. He's going to come – I mean, they're going to come firing all the centers. Right, right, and Triton has the ball to start the second half, but that defense at Cherubusco, where there's a lot of strength along that line, you got to look for them to come right back and really punch this offense right back in the mouth. Coach Whitaker had said at halftime that that was the best defensive half that he has seen so far from this group, and I'd have to agree with him. They were, were put in some bad situations after that uh, – that block punt and whatever else, but they defended. I mean, a fourth down and goal. I mean, a fourth down, and they really defended the pass well in the back corner there. Is look at that ball just kind of sailed a little bit from Burrow. As Triton's going to start with this, I, mean, I think you're going to have to score in this third quarter. I mean, you, you got to score in this third quarter if you're Triton. I mean, that's going to be the big thing with that wind to your back. They were moving the ball very well there in the four, in that second quarter, working into the wind, but working working with it to your back. You want to score here in, the, in this third quarter. We said pregame. Uh, last week they only put nine points up against Winnemac. That's not going to get done against this Cherry Busco team. Yep. You're going to have to score. I think you score right here. Then you apply pressure, right and Cherry Busco might fold. And Burrow, like we were talking about, his passing. They saw him passing a lot more there in that second quarter with their win to their back, as we were talking earlier. Two of six for 33 yards. Don't don't sleep on that too much because Burrow's a pretty good passer, and he can show that he can run too. So to kick. Will be TJ Emenheiser. TJ Emenheiser set to kick. With Anthony Shue back and inside his own 20 yard line, about to the 15 is where he will return the ball. Emenheiser is going to have to kick into that strong wind that has not cooled off one bit. And going to be kind of a squib kick, got a fall on it. Nice job there by Landon Limler just to get the ball covered up and land on it. Trojans get good starting field position to get this second half underway. We. Uh we saw before halftime King Westfer go down and Jeremiah Fair go down. They're both going to be okay. I imagine if Keegan's going to play, he's going to be strictly defense from now on, at least the rest of the night. Like I said, two tough dudes there. I mean, like I said, it's these guys, it's going to be hard to keep them off the field. These two seniors worked hard this season, especially Keegan, to come back from an injury. And these guys here, they're going to work hard the rest of the way out. Shively here, the near side tackle. Cole Shiley takes a snap, going to go out to the freshman Anthony Shue. Stiff arms on his feet, has to spin back around. I don't think he's going to get much on the carry. That was a good job by the Anthony second Shue wave of the Cherubusco defenders. Came right back in following the stiff arm. No gain on the play. That was a good no job game. there by Cherubusco to really shoot the gaps through their blockers and, and really shut off that outside run. Triton, we saw Triton have success with that run. Holding call brought it back, but. Right at the end of halftime there, she had a big run. So actually would end up injuring Seven King Westfer, but look for that later in the game. I imagine they're going to go back to that quite a bit. So Hill, Binkley on that front line. Shoe's going to get it again. Anthony Shoe now running. And go. That's Trace. Is that Trace? I believe so. Anthony Shoe across Nope, the Anthony, you're right. What a man alive. So the Question line. to me tonight. Picks up three yards. And, and Caden Manth, the other one along that front line there, as I was in the middle of there before they snapped it. So third down and six coming up here. Wind to your back. Cole Irvine's a single wide out to the left. McIntyre, Anthony Shue out there with Lucas Cabrera and Nate Amsden in the tight end spot. McIntyre in motion. The safety reads it, but he's got to cut back upfield and he's going to get stopped. Nice job there. 
by Colin Blake to trip up Hunter McIntyre. Fourth down McIntyre coming up. That's bad timing for uh, Shively and McIntyre. There. He, McIntyre basically had to stop his motion in the backfield before he could get the ball again. They've got to get that down so they can have – crisp, clean handoffs and let Hunter get it at 100 miles an hour. And this in this second half, like I said, the Trojans the last couple weeks have, you know, they looked good all the way through into that fourth quarter. They're going to have to look good here, but Lucas Cabrera has a leg. See if he can handle this snap a little bit better this time. Farrell to snap. It's high. Cabrera's got to track it down again and just gets it off. They're going to call a flag down there. And it's going to take a Triton roll all the way down inside the 25-yard line. But we do have a flag the on the play. It's going to be roughing on Bionski. Bionski just landed right on Cabrera's leg. They're going to call a personal foul on the Eagles running into the kicker. And a big penalty there. The Trojans get live. Watch here. You see Bionski try to get through there. Yep, the very end there. Ryan just caught it. Took out that, just kind of swept that leg. So running into the kicker, I don't – I roughing think it. I think it's roughing. Down, yep. Right? It was roughing. As Don just said, that's one of the few you'll see as an automatic first down. Big break for Triton. Now if he had just, you know, grazed up against him or whatever, it'd just been five yards repunt or whatever. But that's a 15-yard. Yep, 45-yard line. So that'll put them back in eagle territory. Servine will just First pull the one Trojan. defender and go up there and stand in his spot out there to the left side. Cam Shively, Caleb Limler, the two bookends. Farrell and Fairchild, the two guards, with Limler, Josh Limler to snap. Shively back under center. Here we go. First and ten. Goes back to McIntyre, the defense buys. McIntyre's got some space, but a nice bit of tackling there. McIntyre, ball carrier. By T.J. Emmenheiser, got right through, did a good job coming up and wrapping up the ball carrier. Second and nine. Second and nine there as McIntyre would have had a long way to go, but that was a good bit of tackling there by Emmenheiser to bring him down. Second and nine here. Trojans kind of sputtering a little bit on offense coming out they, of the gate. They have good initial blocks. Chair Busco, secondary, just coming up and making plays, doing what they need to do to try to stop this Trojan offense. They got that defense fired up. Toss to the left side. Two wide receivers out to the left side. Shively is going to go out to Anthony Shue. He's got blocking. Anthony Shue still go. Hang on to that ball, young man, as he rumbles forward. Another push. Good, good job by the offensive line to really open up that run on that outside and seal those blocks. Lucas Cabrera with a key block there as well to get the – to get Anthony Shue there a little further. Third and two. So third and two coming up. So, so far, Triton has come out in that trips formation where they've got two wide receivers and the tight end, and they've run a toss to that side both times. Like I said, next year, hopefully, we got you the marker so we can see you drawing all these little things. And I'm drawing on the table here with my fingers. <laughs> and Not near as cool. Yeah. The mist is picked back up now. Heavy mist. We saw earlier. Are they going to run it back to the right side? No. No, shoe up the middle, and he'll get for maybe about a yard. It's going to be close. I think he's going to be just short, fourth down coming up. To the 36. One thing is we've seen Triton run that. I need to draw. I'm sorry. We've seen Triton run that toss, those three wideouts over here. But they're, Chair Busco is leaving this side. If they want to try to pull a quick one on them, give Anthony the ball out space on that weak side where there's no blockers, I mean, I mean, Anthony Shue Maybe can, look can into make that. a mess, can make, can make a miss as well. Cabrera and Shively here to the near side. Fourth down coming up, Shive, or shooting the backfield. And, can, and Cole Shively's going to go for it. I think he's just got enough. I don't know. It's going to be close. Close to the first they down. They started the ball on the 45. As you see the that ball missed. is at the 35. It should be a first down. That miss is coming down hard. It looks like they're going to give him the first. They're nope. Gonna measure. They're going to measure it. Timeout for All measurement. Right. Drew Westford, get out there and measure. So the chain gang's going to have to walk forward. That's a terrible spot. I, thought it was I don't know. Kind of thought he had enough to get that first down there. So we got the Orion cam. He's going to zoom all the way in down there on the ball. Off the <laughs> the, uh, He's got to be on top. He's got a job to do now. The white hat will get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to stretch it out here. And that's oh, a first down. Oh. He's stepping on the chain, but he's still got it. He's got it by yeah, a He's got about the nose of the football just past first down. 
Big Blue oh, Wrecking God, Crew. Anthony Cole Shinley really line. punched through there. He saw, he saw him do that earlier in the ballgame to really kind of push Cole that ball Shidley forward. On the quarterback Another seat. break for Triton. But one thing for me, for me, Caden, is that clock. It's been a fast and furious game. It just feels like it has just done nothing but run just all running, night. Just yeah. draining. Speaking of draining, Farmers Drainage, one of our sponsors here tonight. We want to maximize your field's performance. Get a hold of those guys over there at Farmers Drainage. Appreciate their sponsorship here tonight. I will say one positive thing about the wing tee. The clock never stops. McIntyre on his feet. He's got some space. Down the sideline. Stas cuts back inside, and he gets a big gain inside the 10-yard line. Big play for Triton as he was so woke. Got through. Watch him take off here. Sorry, Kate, didn't interrupt you there no, on that one. Oh, you're good. Interrupt me. But I saw Hunter McIntyre just oh. take off and go. Oh, is it going to work? Uh-oh. Here we go. So we'll see him here. No, nope. nope. that's oh, not it. Nice the work. punt. Roughing the punter call. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. That's all right. No, something's not working right. If you want to see it, just rewind it on your YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I'll rewind it. Go back 10 seconds. <laughs> Going to go up to Anthony, Anthony Shue, and he's going to go forward and just spin his way as Anthony he gets his way Shue inside the five-yard five line. That's second and goal coming up here. Big Blue Wrecking Crew moving the ball here on offense really Picks well. Five yards to the four-yard line. Those hog second mollies up front. Now, I, really, I mean, just doing a good job, really opening up those rushing lanes. As I was saying, the one positive thing I will ever say about the wing tee, the clock doesn't stop. <laughs> I won't say anything nice about it other than that. Oh, boy. Or Caden in the wing tee. I got that text today. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Going to McIntyre, but nice job there by Brayton Gordon to get in there and wrap up the ball carrier. A big third down and goal coming up as McIntyre was Last met as soon as he got the ball. Back to the five, third and goal. That was a great job there by Gordon to really kind of key in on his player and really does a good job waiting, being patient, reading the ball carrier and bringing him down. Long drive. Gord 12. Gordon a senior. 12 plays on the drive here, correct? Yeah. 11. 11. Right, just one out there. On that, last tackle that was the rough in the punter. Gotcha. Shively again going to drop Get back. Here it. comes pressure looking. He kind of fades away, throws it back, and almost intercepted. That's Lucky right. break there as Emmenheiser got a hand on it. I, I think if you're a coach, kick the ball. Here, kick that ball. Kick the ball. the ball. Dominic's coming out. They're going to kick it. And Cole Shively has done a good job kicking the ball this year. Perfect but on his field goal attempts. We almost saw another red zone interception from Cole Shively. We saw one last week. If they want to do that, they cannot. They, if they want to win the game, they can't turn the ball over in the red zone. It's a 22-yard field goal attempt from Snaps the five. good, holds good. Got and it. that one's going to drop right through, split the uprise. Triton takes a 10-point lead. Cole Shively, 22 yard field Cole goal. Cole Shively remains perfect kicking his field goals this season. As the window is back, I think that was a good call there by Coach Yunus to kick that field goal. Triton leads 10 0. So 5.53 to go in this third quarter. Ten, also, another zero. sponsor here tonight, the Workman family. Want to thank them. Ken, Lindsay, Dante, Malachi, Workman for their support of Triton football in tonight's broadcast on the Triton Trojan Sports Network. Got an update from Fremont. Is that where they're yes. at? Yep. Adam Central's up 33-0 to zero at halftime. So winner okay. of this game will take on Adam Central next week. Are you going to call that that early? I said the winner of this game. I know. I mean, Adam Central's up. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never know. I could be wrong. Hey, Fremont. scoring yeah, guy, hey, 13 hey, plays, hey. 63 yards. Total of six minutes and six seconds. As Don just said, six minutes and, and change on that drive. That was a big drive for trying to keep going. But that block, that roughing the, kick, roughing the kicker, really opened things up and gave them some life that they didn't quite have. What did we say? They need to get out and score on their first possession. Thanks to that roughing the punter call, they got the opportunity, and they capitalized on it. Cabrera's going to go. And on They're going to go over the yep. reverse to Hill. He's got some space. Hill running through blockers. Farrell's going to have to hang on to it. Ball, 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 ball. I think Triton's got it. I think Triton's, it. Triton's, I think Triton's got, it. got that ball. If they got a big turnover there for Cherubusco, Eunice likes Farrell. it. And, uh, and I think Cherubusco's got it. On the play, by Good job Cherubusco. by Farrell. Ripped that ball out. He had him stood up. We'll watch here as Nondorf gives it off to There's Hill. There's the reverse. At the 36 yard line. And there's Amazon on the initial hit. Then Farrell stands him up, rips that ball out, and just 
Good. wasn't quick enough to get on it at the end there. Way to go, Farrell. I, I mean, Farrell, that was like, I mean, he reached right in there and just ripped that ball. That was a good play by Jeremiah to kind of have that sense of awareness to go back there and strip that one out. Berth back out now, first and 10 from his own 36-yard line out of the shotgun. Going to move Marks to his right hip. Hill's in motion. He's going to keep it. He's got the option. He's trying to find space. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's, and they're going to hang on to him. And I believe leading the charge there was Lucas Cabrera in on the tackle. This Burrow, I mean, he's going to keep it real slow. Kind of develop, that play was really slow developing. Didn't really quite have the pressure, or didn't really, really quite have the holes to run. But no, right there, big break. We're trying the defense stay in put and staying with the quarterback. And Burroughs came into this game with over 100 yards rushing the ball, so he has the ability to make people miss and get out in space. Just great job by the Triton front. Close up those gaps. Didn't leave many anywhere to go. So he'll be kill. He'll go from passer to receiver as Nondorf back. Motion, Hill. Oh, oh fumbles, fumbled snap, Nondorf's going to throw a trade, picks it up. Yes. Nondorf overshot yes. him, and I believe that's going to be Ken. Fairchild comes in and picks up the fumble. Nondorf couldn't quite get there on it. Watch it here, just over his head. Fairchild comes through, reads it, and gets right on it. That slippery ball, Nondorf rolls right over it. Triton gets the ball inside five minutes, deep in Columbia, or deep in Cherubusco territory. Columbia City, huh? Hey, hey. <laughs> Give me a break. Worse off play than Eagles. It's the same difference. <laughs> it's that way. It's that general direction. We switched sectionals for a second. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know you're excited. It's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Time to settle down. Going to go to McIntyre. McIntyre out. Gets through. That was a good job there by Nondorf to get through on the tackle. Nondorf not happy about that last call. He wants – not last call, last play. He wants to redeem himself there, maybe cause a turnover. It's near the four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Triton leading with the ball. Big turnover there. Hey, that's our first turnover of the game. that no gain on the play. We've had a couple turnover on downs, but, yeah, that was the first fumble. Fumbled. Fumble or interception. Shiley back under center. Reverse to misdirection Cabrera. To Cabrera. Cabrera trying to get outside. Stiff arm still on his feet, and he'll get a first down. Nice job there by Lucas Cabrera. He really got there, really extended that arm on the defender. Nice stiff arm there to keep himself up and going. You saw the athleticism right there from the senior, Lucas Cabrera. Cole Irvine kind of in a tough spot on that play because he had two guys he Kind of had to block both of them, but he ended up going just for the linebacker, crashing down, and then Cabrera able to make that stiff arm on number 15. I don't have it written down, and made a good play. Devin Clark tried to get through there, but no, but like you see there, the big thing I saw from Cole Shiley was he kept his composure in that moment, and I think they're going to let the clock run down here and wait and call a timeout. But right there, Cole Shiley, you see him keeping his composure right there. It was kind of a – Almost, I wouldn't call it a broken play. They knew where they were going with it, but he had to hold his composure with a lot of stuff moving there. Did a good job keeping his cool, getting the ball to Cabrera, big first down as they'll get first and goal here following the timeout. Caden, that's kind of one of things you want to see as Cole Shavi has really grown this year is that, is that mental toughness has really just taken over. That, that counter, reverse, whatever you want to call it, it is a very slow developing play, and they have to have good blocking up front. And we've, tried to, we've seen them try to run that in the past. We haven't seen that blocking like we did right there. That was what really opened up that play. And for the guys, like I said, being patient, let, letting the play develop and not trying to overshoot it or rush something. They did a good job being patient, finding their blocks, really pushing back. But Lucas Cabrera, I mean, getting getting him involved now, getting on the outside, that big stiff arm there just really shows off his athleticism, getting that outside. And that was a big, big carry on there on that play. Chair Busco, they all bit hard on that first initial fake, and that was – also what played a big factor in leaving Cabrera with all that space on the left side. Had the camera guy fooled too. And me, I didn't quite see what was going on down there. I actually was watching the field for once. It's hard. You got two different views here. You can watch the field or watch down here. I usually watch the TV. You can see a little bit a little bit closer. Don't you don't need binoculars. It's we got, easier we, for we numbers got. and stuff too. So first and goal now. From the seven, from the Cherubusco seven yard line. Trey Shoe. Gonna go to Shoe. Shoe's gonna go for me, about a yard on the play. (laughs) 
think I'm going to have to hire somebody to take over the social media duties that I lack in. <laughs> can I see the guy sure, you can find some. That's why I'm yeah. sleeping on the camera because I'm trying Except to tweet stuff. To six, second and goal. Just make Trent tweet. Well, he's down there. Well, he's down in the end zone. He's freezing. He's got his cowboy boots on so his toes wouldn't be cold, he said. Okay. Shiva now, here we go again. Limler to snap, goes back. Going to go back out to shoot. Trey shoe. shoe on a toss. Big carry. It's going to be close. I think he's about a yard shy there. Usually we see Anthony on those toss plays and let Trace run up the gut. But Like I said, you're short there within hmm. six yards of the it's end zone. You want to talk about a quick guy there within line. the first five to ten Third yards. Trace Shoe can get downhill in a hurry. Just lower his head and let the diesel do his thing. I think that's a little bit of an almost mixed misdirection play for Coach Eunice. Because I think when Chair Busco sees – Big old Trace shoe in the backfield. They're thinking, okay, dive, dive, dive. And then they give it outside. You got all that space. Third and goal. Going to go back out to McIntyre. He's got his second touchdown of the night. Triton 16. Up 16 he is there. Looking good here in the third quarter. 222. Nice play there by Hunter McIntyre. Gets outside. Nice block by Lucas Cabrera right yep. there. And McIntyre the string is, cuts up field, goes right in. McIntyre now six touchdowns on the year. Passes Anthony Shoe for a rushing touchdown lead. Not bad. Well, hey, and Hunter, like I said, he doesn't like it, but the man with the motor that doesn't quit showed off there. Shively's kick is up, and it splits the uprights. Shively's Trite takes a 17-point lead over Cherubusco here in the third quarter, 2.22 so to go. Two minutes, 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Triton 17, Cherubusco 0. But you look at who Cherubusco's played this year like a I – mean, a here, I got their here. schedule here. Go ahead. Okay, Brian's got it here. He'll throw it up there. Now, they put, they can put up some points, as you saw against Lakeland and Garrett there. And then Prairie Heights, they put up points. And West Noble put up points. This is a group that will find a way to put points. And they put up point, six points up on an undefeated Fairfield team. Don't quite count on to this Cherubusco team just yet. This is a group that can come right back. And if Triton has anything like the last couple weeks, struggling in that fourth quarter, they're going to have to come up big if they want to have a chance to win this ball game. Yep, still just over 14 minutes left in the game. Two minutes left here in the third quarter. Big drive here for Cherry Bosco. This is going to be the difference maker. If they can put points up on this drive, then they're still in it. But I think if you go three and out and have to punt the ball back to the Trojans, they're just going to work the clock, and you might get one more possession, maybe two after that. So winner of this game will take on the winner of Adams Central and Fremont next week. Cabrera to kick. Ondorf and Hill back to receive. We saw Farrell rip out a fumble in the last kickoff. Cabrera with a nice kick goes up over Nondorf. And he did not touch didn't it. Didn't touch it. That'll be a touchback Cabrera's for Cabrera. Into the end zone. Lucky break is if touchback. Nondorf would have got a piece of that one. He Almost got a piece of it. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. 17 nothing. Defense coming back out. Triton's defense coming up big in some moments there. I mean, granted, it was just a miscue on Cherubusco the last time. That's why the turnover happened. Just a, just a high snap and. Ondorf does that slippery field just to overshot the ball. We saw Fairchild come in and scoop up the fumble. So we'll see what that defense can do. First and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Burroughs in the shotgun. Going to go back over to Fumble Marks again. And the ball is and out. I believe Triton fell on it. It's going to be close. It's a fight down there at the bottom of the pile. Amari Snyder was the first one there who had – no, not Amari Snyder, I'm sorry. And Caleb Limler comes up with it. Big blue wrecking crew coming up big on, on here on this first play for the drive. Marks gets through and you see him just knock it free. Initially, I think Lucas Cabrera yep. was in on Cabrera. there, but Caleb Limler fighting for that football. He was hungry and he went after that ball. Big play there. As Marks just got the ball just ripped away. Big two big turnovers for for Cherubusco here in this third quarter. Triton takes over first and ten. So Triton two fourteen, another chance to put a ball and another score up inside deep in Cherubusco territory. McIntyre cuts back up. Nice job there. No, no, nobody was out there. As Colin Blake stayed put and stayed with the runner. I didn't see any. Defensive back out on, I believe Cole Irvine was the wide out there. Look at that for later in the game. 
maybe even right now. Maybe Coach Eunice saw that and wants to go at it. So we'll shift a player out here this time as Emmenheiser will come over here on this near side. Cole Irvine. Shively just under center. Goes to Trey Shue and runs Nowhere into his own go. blocker. Where to go? Rumbles forward. Shue down near the 15 yard line. Third down coming up. Trey Shue picks up three yards. It'll be third and six at the 15. Minute 12 and counting in this third quarter. The Chair Busco looks beat down there. They are huffing and puffing, trying to catch their breath. So this is Triton's third possession of the quarter already. And, and a false start. False start as Lucas Cabrera reached up and touched the blocker in front of him. They're going to get in that one and then move him back five Here yards. It's third down Triton. and 11. Moves the ball back to the 20. It'll be third so we and saw 11. The field goal attempt earlier in the ball game. That hurts trying to momentum a little bit. And a different play call going to have to come now for Coach Eunice. So inside a minute now. Well, we've seen a lot of things work. I mean, like I said, that slant and eight ams, which I've been, you've been begging for all year. I've asked for that every and single game. Watch it again here. Look, that defender's 10 yards off. They're going to run it. You're going to McIntyre. McIntyre still on his feet, goes forward. I don't think McIntyre he's going to quite get there. There's going to be a few yards shy of a first down. Yard Inside yard. 30 seconds to go in this third quarter. Picks up seven Here yards to go for it here. fourth and four. I, I think he tried the hard count. And I want to kick the ball. 30-yard field goal. He made a 22-yarder. He had room don't, to go. Don't think so. As Dominic Smith is going to be over here. The halftime score, half score at Caston was 14 to 8 over North Miami. Say Caston 14 to 8? Yep. Thank you. And that's the end of the They're third gonna quarter. They're going to think about it. Now you're going to kick into the win if you are going to kick. So I imagine we'll see the offense out there. I mean, like I said, as like I said, the clock has done nothing but drain here tonight. Caden, did you ever know how important it is to maintaining your watershed in your field? No, I do not. In order to maximize the usage of your field, the potential yield of your crops, water drainage plays a key part in that process. If you're looking to improve the drainage in your fields and maximizing your field's potential, contact Craig Holly at Farmers Drainage Specializing and System Drained Acres. Appreciate their sponsorship here tonight. I'm Andrew here alongside Cade Nackins in the Hall of Famer. Ryan Limler here for oh. the Triton Trojan Sports Network as the Trojans lead 17-0 here at the Trojan Tundra. Winner of this game will take on the winner of Adams Central and Fremont. As we just said, casting up on North Miami and Southwood getting a chance to play Northfield. After earlier in the week, it was said that they may have to forfeit that game due to COVID-19 problems. But they all got retested and were able to play, the, play that game. It's got to be tough for Northfield to not a chance to really prepare for that team. I mean, yeah, you told on, told on Monday. Yep. Yet you don't have to play. You're moving on. And then, wait, wait, hold up. And they find yeah. out yesterday they're going to be playing Southwood. They should have. Told him no takes his backsies. We're moving on to the next round. I don't care what you say. <laughs> that or move the game to a Saturday or a Monday game. Yep. Shively under center. Going to go out to Anthony Shue. Anthony Shue, or Trey Shue, rather. Shue still on his feet, trying to rumble forward. The, the diesel. The diesel finds his way into the inside Trey there. Shue, a nice carry the there for Trey line. Shue. Or Anthony Shue. Down. I thought that was Anthony. Yeah, then he took his, did he take his gloves off? I don't uh, know. I no, he was running so fast, couldn't see the gloves. It was Anthony. It was Anthony. So first down and goal Make now. Number 22, Anthony Shue on the carry. Couldn't tell who it was. I, I thought it was Trace. I thought so too there for a minute. Southwood is up 20-0 to zero on Northfield at halftime. Those two taking it on down, or battling down there. As Anthony Shue in the backfield with Hunter McIntyre. Cabrera in the wingback spot here on the near side. Goes back to Anthony Shue, and Shue gets gobbled up there, tripped up there at the line. Anthony Shue, the ball carrier. Short carry on the play. Trace and Anthony are going to have to switch numbers. 32 and 22 are too close. <laughs> I know. Picks up the yard. Have to have a word about that. Line. Second goal. So second and goal so, from the four-yard line. 
I want to give a shout out to our Rodney sisters in Tennessee, Michigan, and Texas watching him play their alma mater Eagles and give him a shout out. Of course we will. So shot so Cole Shiley back under center. Goes outside to McIntyre, and he's going to look for another touchdown. He's got it from four yards out. Hunter McIntyre, the accelerator. Three touchdowns on the evening. Give him a hat trick. I'm going to throw my hat out there. Oh. <laughs> my window's closed. I can't throw my hat. I can try. So 23 points put up there by the Trojan offense. Now Cole Shive is going to have to kick into the wind here. This is brutal coming out of that north end zone. Ball's down, kicks up. Oh, no, oh my goodness. He just cut that wind in half. 24 0. What wind, Cole Andy? Extra point kick is good. Yeah, it's not even raining anymore. <laughs> oh, no. It's blowing. That flag is blowing. It's a, it died for a split second. 10 <laughs> 38 to go. Triton out in front as this group. Firing on all cylinders. Pitched a shutout first three quarters, too. Like I said, this is this is going to be a big quarter for them. Let's see what they learn here in these last couple weeks. If they want to have a chance, they've got to step up and play big here in this fourth quarter. I mean, the biggest thing for Cherubusco in that third quarter was two big turnovers that gave them gave the ball deep. Back-to-back right. -back plays. And on back, exactly, back-to-back -back -back possessions. They've had one play in the... Uh, second Move half, that wasn't a fumble. They seconds. ran three plays, two fumbles. And be moving the ball for them tonight, I think they've only got past the 50-yard line twice. They started on the 50, uh, They started on the 18 after the blocked punt. And other than that, they've moved it across one time, turned it over on downs. So Hill and Nondorf back to return. Cabrera to kick. See if they go a little bit of trickery back there. Cabrera has got a strong leg with that wind. I don't know. Full to split the uprights and the nice kicks. We'll see what happens here. Cabrera now sends a line drive. Yep, take the wind out of it. And Cherubus was going to touch it for her. Goes out of bounds. Anthony Shue back in here. As he'll get brought down there by Trent Conley. That was 15. On the return there from Devin Clark. Devin Clark. Trent and Conley with a nice the job there to the bring player. down the ball carrier. To the 30-yard line. First and 10 from their own 30-yard line. On the return to the 30 yard so line. That was a big deal First there because that ball looked like Eagles. it was going to go out of bounds, but it might have lost enough momentum is why the ball carrier picked it up and took off with it. I think it was kind of done rolling. If anything, it was going to roll back towards the playing field rather than out of bounds. So, I mean, if Triton were to get down there and fall on that, that's their ball. Evan Bryles. And there is Burrow goes on the far side. Cole Shively trying to seal it off. Farrell's there to push him out of bounds. Is that what you were pointing at? Burrow off the ball carrier. Cherubusco wanted a personal foul on Jeremiah Farrell, but I think with everybody's momentum Picks going out of bounds. 15 yards to the 44. First down, Cherubusco. So big carry there. First and 10 now for Burrow after the carry. I was watching as they had Bryles in a defensive end. That, that was. Play. That's Cherubusco's second longest play of the game, 14 yards. Two wide out split here to the near side. Burrow in the backfield. Sends a man in motion. Yeah, He's looking back here. to pass. He's got Nondorf downfield. And he had just big catch there for Cherubusco. Yes, Amari just get, he gets beat off the line of scrimmage. Could not make up that time. At the Triton 20. Amari coming into this game, three interceptions. Maybe he was trying to cherry pick and jump in front of try to get his fourth interception. But you saw there Burrow put his arm in that wind into that one. Nice play right on the money to Nondorf. First and ten. Triton struggles in this fourth struggles in the fourth quarter. Not looking good there. Goes back up the left side. The carry. He's still up. He's still on his feet. Brought down by Lucas Cabrera with the carry from Marks. Like I said, you know, this fourth quarter is going to be big for Triton. I mean, this is where they got to show they've grown this year is, is having to go down and find a way to play big in that. Uh, I mean, to play big there in that fourth quarter where they've really struggled this season. Second down and seven for Burrow. 
As Hills on the far side goes forward and gets brought down by Landon Limler. Hilly, excuse me. I've called him Hill all day too. It's okay. It's dark up here. I can't read my roster. <laughs> Could be old eyes too. Who knows? Burriff back now. He's got looking right. Here comes the pressure. Steps in. So it goes back. The end zone to Nondorf Ooh. and McIntyre's there. Nondorf landed on it. It was landed on by McIntyre there. Both get up okay. But he had Wyatt Marks on a swing route. There was no one over there on his left side. Watch here. Yeah, no one there on the left side. Goes right up. McIntyre played it well. Played it play on the ball. Just nothing there. Just like I said, I mean, you're gonna throw it and you're gonna throw it out as hard as you can. Coming down on the track, that hurts. Fourth and two. Let's go four down territory here the rest of the way out for them. 9.14 to go. This is going to be a big momentum shifting play. Big Triton's going to play big here on defense. Goes back to Marks, and Marks is going to have the first, first down, down all the way forward. He's a he's a tough runner. He only had 16 yards in that first half, but he is not going to give up. A five-yard gain and a first down. Big first down for Cherry Bosco. First and goal for so All right. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm superstitious. I don't. I don't think you can be right now. Eight forty-five now. Bert. Birth Birth. back to go. Nondorf. Nondorf from the outside. McIntyre. Good Look, tackle, nice Hunter job. McIntyre. I mean, it was a good effort there by Nondorf to try to get away from there, but Hunter McIntyre gets right in there and takes away his legs. McIntyre kept his head up, so he saw Nondorf's move rather than dropping his head and just completely whiffing on the tackle. That's what you have to do. You have to keep your head up when you're tackling. That also causes concussions when you keep your head down like that. He's going to make me go out in the rain. Well, I debated. I it's mean, okay. We'll go. We'll, we'll, well go we can do it up here, but we'll be up here all night. That's uh, all right. <laughs> And Marks will bring it in from eight yards out. Bus right, goes on nice. the board. Eight-yard touchdown run. That was Wyatt Marks, correct? Yes. Eight yards out. Nice job by him, to, that second effort to get through. His fourth rushing touchdown on the year. Sure, Busco going to go for two here, I believe. Yep, have to in this situation. You Send get, everybody in. You get eight points three times. What do you get, Andy? I'm telling you, I'm superstitious. Burriff back to throw it. Marks there on his right hip. Missing Hilly in motion. And he'll get through, convert the two point conversion. 24 8. Must go to kick it here as they now trail. Finding the so finding pay dirt, you know, like I said, you got, you got, I mean, Busco third. really working hard. Two turnovers in that third eight. quarter. Nice bounce back drive Third's for them third. to get down there and put some points on the board. I think Chair Busco going to try for an onside kick, maybe a short squib kick because they don't want Triton to have the ball. Triton has milked the clock all game long, long drives. They've had a dr two drives over six minutes. If you're in those first two levels, don't you dare pick that ball up. You just fall, fall and on land it. on that thing. You yep. just put every ounce of your being on top of that thing and cover it up and not give it away. Just pretend that you're going to a big brother trying to hide a Christmas present from a little brother, and you ain't giving it up. Just saying. <laughs> I have to take your word for it. No, no, no one, I'm no nice one. to my sister. Number 22, TJ. <laughs> boy, I, boy. I, mean, I, I think that's the farthest thing from the truth I've ever heard on a broadcast. <laughs> See, I wasn't nice to my siblings, and they'll be, and they'll chime right in and tell you too. Had to, had to establish dominance. Right. <laughs> so Conley, Dominic Smith, and Triton's going to take a timeout. Timeout. Landon Titan Miller's in that second, second level. Timeout. But you got Farrell, Fairchild, Shively, Amsden, Tyler Amsden, and Trey Shue up in that front line. How do you say that? Emmenheiser. Emmenheiser going to kick. Fremont finally scored. Adam Central 33, Fremont 6, end of third. So as we were, I just got it to finally update. 
looking at Triton's leaders, Cole Shively, 2 of 4 for 22 still, but Hunter McIntyre, 17 carries, 93 yards, and three touchdowns for him. But you saw there, you saw Burr of 3 of 8, 67 yards, but you saw that big play there as he went down to Nondorf. I mean, that, that was a big play, and the Nondorf runs it in for the touchdowns. So, I mean, you kind of got to look here. Mark's 30 yards on the ground. Mark's up to 30 yards. 15 more, and he eclipses that 700 mark on the year. You know, as windy as it is out, I think we better do the interviews in here. Okay. Well, we'll send the young guy out to get Eunice. That's fine. <laughs> I figured. So the onside kick is there. It goes right through. Triton's got it. I believe Dominic Smith Triton fell on it. covers the onside kick attempt. And it you was Dominic correct. Smith. Smart job there by just see the ball fall on it. Triton takes over with 8.03 oh, to go in the ball game. They lead 24-8 here from the Trojan Tundra. Takes As they change here, I want to thank our other sponsor tonight, the Workman family. Their sponsorship here of this broadcast. Appreciate any and all help on the broadcast we've had here this evening. Thanks to Ken, Lindsey, Dante, and Malachi Workman for their support of Triton football in tonight's broadcast on the Triton Trojan Sports Network. They wish the Trojans nothing but the best here in the sectional play. Under McIntyre. Under McIntyre gets brought Mike down. Bionski. As we as said, Bionski, he's a beast Hunter up the middle, and Bionski. he punches right through that Trojan offensive line and just pushes Hunter McIntyre back yeah. deep in his own Bionski. backfield. Push here. Pushes him over. Bionski. 20 tackles for loss on the year. That's an amazing number. Second and No, tackles for loss, 20. <laughs> just making sure he was still awake. So second down and 14 coming up from their own 40 on that four-yard loss. McIntyre under 90 yards now following that loss. Goes back to me, find a fumble, bobbles it a little bit, but hangs on tight. And, and might have got a yard. They're not going to snap this ball until 640. Absolutely, absolutely have to. That clock is your best friend at this point. Tackled again by number 51, Hunter Bionski. Bionski. Picks up two yards to the 42, third and 12. So Irvine will take his spot on the far side and brings it in. As Caden said, 14 seconds on the play clock. They're not going to snap this thing until they have absolutely have to. 10 seconds on the clock. Yeah, about five seconds on the play clock. You want to try to snap it. McIntyre goes back to McIntyre. He's here on the near side. Cuts back in. The outrun is blocker, Jeremiah McIntyre Farrell. He's got to get out on his horse and get out so he can make a block, give Hunter some room. Devin Clark was there, and he got in there on the tackle to initially bring him down. We'll see. We could have Caden ask questions, and I could block to win since I'm fairly large. <laughs> it's called windbreak. Send the snowplow out down there. To well, and I didn't bring the long-range <laughs> microphone, so if you did interviews, you'd have to do them right down now, uh, on the bleachers. We'll send the young guy down to go get coach. So they are going to so punt here. Cabrera kicking into the wind. Gets a good snap on that one. Gets it away. That ball is going to take a Triton roll inside the 30-yard line. 28 is, is where Burroughs and company line. will come back out. And scored on their last drive, 548 to go in the ball game. They trail by two scores. So Triton takes just over two minutes off the clock there, 2.15. The so Coach Eunice looking good against his alma mater. You were hoping for at least one first down. That way you can milk at least another minute out of that clock, minute and a half. And six minutes left. Bus go down two scores if they can right. convert both like, two-point conversions. Like I said, the defense has got to clamp down. This is where they're struggling point here the last two weeks. Burf back to throw, steps in and throws a guy wide open on the far side, and he hangs on to it. Gordon, big catch there, gets through McIntyre, still on his feet, gets all the way down inside the 20 yard line. Down. Flag on the play. He was all by himself. Cabrera slipped on a. Watch him here, just gets outside. Yep, lost just his lost defender. his footing. Cabrera, yep, like I said, lost his footing. 
Yeah, hangs on to it. Get, get re, does better than Daniel Jones. Stays on his feet and gets all the way down there. Amari Snyder with a touchdown saving tackle with Landon Limler. I don't, I don't know what the flag was for. I was watching to see if it was a late hit, out of bounds, or what was the deal was there. I think it's going to be holding or blocking the back. Is that going to take away that big play? Chop block, legal chop Three block. Chop block on the Eagles. Chabasco. That'll move him back from the spot of the I think, foul. I think that's 15 from the spot. So that big play there, not quite erased, the the but not quite as valuable as they just have. But you it's just damaged. saw there. But as you saw there, that secondary has got to come up big. 15-yard penalty. That's that's big. All that was, I mean, Cabrera was with him. That was a good job line. there by Burriff to see that he was wide open. 534 remaining. The First and 10 line. from their own 40 from the Trojan 43 yard line. Birth out of the shotgun. And in motion. He's looking downfield. Here comes the pressure. Nate Amson. He's got to force a throw. Too high. Incomplete. Amson leads the Trojans yeah, in sacks with four. He was looking for a fifth incomplete. right there. There was a whole host of blue jerseys coming through that line. Nice job by Burf to hang in there and try to make a throw, but a little high. Good coverage on secondary. It was a good job, and you saw Cole Shively kind of in there doing a good job in the coverage. Cole's really came on as a defensive back here in the last few games. Yeah, we didn't see him until last week or maybe two weeks ago against Knox at the very end, but he's played well coming in. He hasn't played all year in defense. Two wide receivers to the left. Burroughs back to go. Here comes Copy Limler. Burroughs going to keep it and go. Sees nothing. Uh, did he get out of bounds? Been on the tackle for Caleb's Titan. just not quite quick enough on his feet to – Really corral him there. I'd be scared too from Cubby. I'm just saying. Six yard line of Titan. Picks Third up down. Seven yards. Got out of bounds. So 514 now. Third, Third and short and coming up. For Burroughs. Marks on his right hip. Two wide receivers here to the near side. Clark and Hilly. Goes back to Marks. He's up the left side. He's First got down. some blockers. He's got space. Marks is going to walk all the way in from 36 yards out. Busco Number 21, gets back Wyatt in at 5.06. Quick strike ability down, as the big blue wrecking crew getting wrecked here as now Busco trails by 10. Big two-point conversion coming up here with 5.06 to go in the ball game. That. That's going to put Marks over 700 yards and give him a fifth touchdown. And uh, confusion. And now we're good to go. So here we go, two-point conversion. Burrow back out of the They're shotgun. Gonna go, Burf back out of the shotgun. Going to go to Marks. Nope. They're going to go with the guy here on the inside, and he'll throw it. And complete. That's a, Still that's a, a big game. stop. Because you just said a two-possession game now, yep. as opposed to just that eight-point like touchdown. Big two-point conversion there. Let's go trails by 10 with five minutes and one second remaining on that clock. 42-second yard. 42-second drive, sorry. On Chance that. to advance in sectional play and for both teams. You know, like I said, both teams missing a game or two on the schedule this year. Right, missing the game against LaVille. Cherubusco had to drop a game. Both teams in this odd season trying to keep alive. So you're going to have your hands, guys, up there. McIntyre's waiting with Cabrera, Farrell, and Amari. Nate Amson right up there in the middle on the 50-yard line right there on the tee. Smith, I believe Irvine, Bryles, and Tyler Amson here on the near side. Shu and, Shy and Cole Shively back deep. And he's short step, and I think he's going to onside kick. Emmenheiser going to try it again. That ball's going to travel. Triton touched it, and, and I think Cherubusco's got the football. Now the ball squirted out over here. It's between Evan Bryles and the Busco player. They're not letting go of it. And they're going to give it to Cherubusco. Watch here at the end of the play as Ryan will slow it down. That ball squirt free. 
And if you look, I thought Bryles was I think on Bryles him. got there, but I don't know. It's gonna be it was a close play as Emmenheiser, who made the kick, that got is, up there. Who gets possession if they're tied up like that? Yeah, so the receiving team should get it. Thanks, Don. Coach Eunice wanting an explanation. The best scoring drive was four plays covering 62 yards. So here we go, 24-14. Keep an eye here in the slot. As Nondorf's there in the slot. He's running up. He's going to go. McIntyre. Here comes the pressure. He'll just That's shovel pass it grounding. out of bounds. Yep, there it is. There it is. There's the grounding call. He'll just shovel pass that one out of bounds. Well, he was standing out of bounds. You, you blend right in with the, the, the line like there. You want to see that? Yeah, we'll yes, play that please. one back. You watch. watch here. They're seeing 22 no might be down to Emmenheiser. We missed it. But he'll pitch pass. it out. Nobody's home. No, there was there's, nobody there. There's nobody there. He was at least five yards back. Yeah, he was behind the place. You saw Tyler Amson kind of jump up there in the way. Yeah, that's right. There was the right. no Busco player in the way. That was a good call by the They negated group. it. They negated the penalty. So Busco played their case enough, I guess. So second down and 10 now. Marks on the left hip now of Burf. Keep an eye, Nondor from the slot. McIntyre's coming over top on that safety help there. He's going right up the seam. Burf sees it. He goes down through. That's got to be OPI. How is that not offensive pass interference? Nondorf came in and tackled Hunter McIntyre before he had a chance Burf to make a play on the ball. Can you replay that for us? As you watch your watch back up here top of your screen, you'll see Nondorf kind of come in. Now I watch, he'll fall down and he'll bring down McIntyre yeah. with him. But they're going to call incidental contact, but I don't know how you can't throw a flag there. 24-14, 4.50 to go in the ball game. A lot of drama in this fourth quarter. And Hunter McIntyre, that's an interception. He won't drop that ball if he has a chance to make a play on it. Third and ten. Here they Farrell. Here comes the pressure from Fairchild. He'll throw up a prayer out of bounds. Fourth down. Pass intended for Rinker and complete. First down. Thanks to the 217 viewers watching. I also want to thank our sponsors, Farmers, Drainage, and the Workman family here tonight for this broadcast on the Tri Trojan Sports Network. Andy O'Hara with Caden Atkins and the Hall of Famer will ride them out on the camera for us. Of course, te tech support shopping tonight. Out of the second half. As you see there, big time out there with fourth and ten coming up. This play here can mean a big, big uh This play is right make here. Or, this is make or break essentially for Cherry Bosco. Because Trenton gets the ball back right now at the forty eight yard line. Let's say Cherry Bosco just gets two stops, two timeouts real quick. They're out of timeouts. Trent can one run one more play, run the play clock all the way down. You're looking at about 3.30 left before Chair Bosco can get the ball back. And then they'd have to put up two more scores after that with no timeouts. So this is a big, this is probably the biggest play of the game right now for Chair Bosco and for this Trojan defense. Like you said, you see that there for Triton, like I said, the last two weeks, having that lead in the fourth quarter. You got the fourth quarter is where they're going to have to pull all their, they're going to have to put all their effort into. Because like I said, I thought coming into this game, if they get the lead in that fourth quarter, they've got to step up big because the last two weeks. We've giving seen up leads them. on two, I mean, on a really good team, and then a team that's kind of a little bit not as talented as us. I think I, I kind of think we were better than that Winnipeg team. But you see that this group here's got to hold on because this Busco team is, is a good football Again, team. Again, we've saw three perfect defensive quarters this fourth quarter. They just cannot get it going. Big play here, Burf out of the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. There's Cam Shively. Ball thrown up, tipped. And that's in. Turnover on down. Triton takes over from their own 48-yard line. The Trojan player got a handle. I thought we were going to. That's Cole Shively. Yeah, Cole Shively got a handle on that play. Watch here at the end of the play. Nice job by them. Look at Cole. Good pressure up front. Oh, Burriff slipped on his mount. That's why that ball was so underthrown. McIntyre, he would just been a second. But, hey, that's fine. Let that ball fall to the ground. So we get the ball on our own 48-yard line. Intended for Nondorf. First and 10 now with 4.38 to go in the ball game. Triton leads by 10. Irvine here on the near side. As Clark's going to come over and keep an eye on him. Going to go to McIntyre. He shakes off one defender. Loses three yards. Bianski gets through there and makes the initial contact. McIntyre, the ball carrier. 
Cherbasco electing not to use their timeout now. So 420. Probably Set. use it after these two plays. Set down two scores. Irvine gets set. Let the clock down and go to five. Let clock go down to five. Wait five more seconds. Shively takes it off. There was six on the play clock. McIntyre goes upfield. McIntyre to Big carry field. there. McIntyre's got to keep running. It looked like he stopped. I hit the hole hard. Gain of five will be third and eight. 3.43 and counting. Third and eight coming up here. Busco wants to keep their hopes alive. They got to make a stop here. Still no timeout from Chair Busco. I don't know I if think, I agree I with that. I think you'll see one after this down. They're trying to conserve one if they get back on offense. They're going to toss right to Anthony Shue. Got two wide receivers out to the far side. In McIntyre's three, in the wing back. Two, one, go. Shoe spin move, and Busco's going to stop him. Triton cannot get past Taylor. that 50-yard line. No gain. That's three minutes. There's the timeout from Cherubusco. It'll be fourth and eight for Triton at the 50-yard so line. Lucas Cabrera with a big kick coming timeout. up here. Timeout, Cherubusco, their second timeout of the second half. Take, take your heart medication. I ate it, Tums. Yeah, you had a Tums? <laughs> Making sure what we got over there. Well, I was going to give a shout-out to all our – Chatters tonight. Dan Stichter, he's watching from Mackinac Island. <laughs> <laughs> Trenton Kreft's watching. Right, all right. The SWJ's watching from North Judson. Thunder Strikes, he's here. Yeah, he's here. Selena Tomilk. We apologize if we butcher your name. So. Well, and a lot of these are like gamer names. Yep. <laughs> Kenneth Cook, Trenton Kreft, I should have said him. Andrew Mendoza. Hey. Drew Mawson's giving us updates from Adam the Adam Central Fremont. Um, Hunter Schutzel and King Productions. He says if we lose, I'm ordering 30 chicken nuggets from McDonald's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Is that 10 for each of us? Or I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. Well, the big guy, you know, you got to give him an extra half or another one there. I mean, that's why. Get, get, got to keep the big guy happy. So Cabrera to kick, Nondorf the back to return. I believe on that far side of him there is going to be Rinker. No far side there. Cabrera to kick. We've had high snaps all day. That's a good snap. Good snap there. Cabrera gets a leg. Oh, blocked, blocked by, by Bionski. By Bionski. That Get away. Ball rolls Get away. Bionski in there again. Yeah, second blocked punt blocked of the game. Big play there. Oh. Watch him get through right there. Just the last second. Got that hand up. Cabrera. Shoe, I believe, was on the block. Yep. He just bulldozes Trey Shoe. Not a lot of people can do that. that ain't very many. These two teams, the second time they faced off since 2000. First time they faced off since 2007. Cherubusco won that meeting. Triton wanted more out of that possession. A minute 40 drive, that killed him. One timeout for Cherry Basco. 24-14, Perifak back in the shotgun. Two wide receivers here on the near side. Going to go to Marks at the left side. He'll get through, but not very far. That clock right continues to run. Questionable call. Trying to catch the defense napping over there to an expectant pass. Yep. Oh, boy. No gain on the play. <laughs> Second and ten. <laughs> we may have to go to the lake house tomorrow. Yeah, I might have to. <laughs> Two wide receivers here to the near side. Burroughs out of the shotgun. Looking left. Here comes Nate Amson. Goes down to the flat to Marks. And Lucas Cabrera. And Cole Shively yeah, in on the tackle. Clock runs. 2.15 to go. Third down coming up. Picks up three yards to the 42, and it'll be third and seven. Is Whitaker really wearing shorts down there? Oh, yeah. Oh, for pity's sakes. I kind of saw I saw it in the locker room. I was like, you're crazy. But the sock hat, I think it negates oh, oh, the. Oh, it negates it. Okay. Two <laughs> twelve on the clock. Two minutes, 12 seconds on the clock. That's the timeout. Thank you, Coach Vermillion. 
That's another one. Coach Vermillion down there in shorts. I don't think I've ever seen him wear pants. <laughs> Time out, Fred Basco. Oh, coming from the alumni out. himself. <laughs> so that's a big moment there as no timeouts left for Cherubusco. Trailing by 10, 2-12 to go. The season on the line. Winner will take on the winner of Adams Central and Fremont Good next week. It's looking like that's going to be Adams Central. There's no game will be there as far as I know. Yep. Well, I guess something if could happen that it has to get moved, but never let's know. hope. <laughs> the Trojan fans getting loud. Third down and seven coming up in their own 43-yard line. Burroughs out of the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the left. Switching marks around to his left hip. False start. False start there. They won a false start. No call. Intercepted by Cole Shively. He'll get through. Big the play there. The freshman quarterback making a play, finishing the game. That's going to do it. I don't think Bus Busco can't stop the clock. And I, I think Triton can just run it out now. Watch here. Watch Cole Shively jump right here in front of this pass. Elevates. It's mine. He takes it back and goes. Big play there from the freshman to bring it back. Triton with the ball. Up 10. 2.03 to go in the ball game. No timeouts left for Cherubusco. I got to give him credit. They did ask if we wanted some Chick-fil-A. But I said not by the time it gets here. <laughs> hey, Chick-fil-A is Chick-fil-A. Well, cold, hot, it don't matter. It's Chick-fil-A. We could put it right in front of the space heater, warm it up. Exactly. <laughs> well, they got a two-hour ride home. They're in Lafayette. Never mind. There are some Never mind. That'll, warm their, they'll warm their sandwiches up on a copier, too. So I'm just saying, it's doable. Shively under center. Going to go straight up. They got to Trace. Trace clamps down on the ball, hangs on to it. Number 32, Trace, shoot the ball, there. And now the clock continues to run. One more time, I want to thank our sponsors again, Farmer Strainage and the Workman family for their sponsorship of tonight's ball game. 145 as the Trojans looking to get their first win in sectional play since 2018. Correct. Senior year, sectional championship. As this group here looks to advance to that second round. Minute 30 to go. I do believe that might do it play clockwise. Shively waits, watches that clock sets, goes back to Trey Shue, lowers his head, goes forward. Big win here for Triton. I, after the, you know, you wanted to see some big happen for this group following that loss to Knox. And then, then they turn around and then a, a heartbreaker to Winnemac, but comes out here. Yes, that fourth quarter, they still need to get better in that fourth quarter. But yet, that they helped up. They found guys. plays in big moments. You saw the defense and come up with three really big turnovers on miscues there from Cherubusco. I mean, like I said, how this group really stepped up defensively, Big Blue Wrecking Crew, they lived up to their name here tonight. The Trojan Tundra are going to move on to play on, looks like, Adams Central next week. Um, with the exception of a little bit in the fourth quarter, defense looked great. Probably the best complete game we've seen since Culver, and they're really going to look to build off that next week. McIntyre outside, still on his feet. Stays down, and that right there is going to do it. Triton wins 24-14, moving on. And section will play the Big Blue Wrecking Crew still alive. As Coach Eunice fired up, beating his alma mater. As Caden's going to go down and get some stats for us. I think this thing updated here. Or Coach. Or co oh, I'm sorry, go ahead and get Coach for us. Yeah, I get your – yeah, yeah, you might want that. You get the lights on the way, lights. So as we saw there, sort of Cherubusco, leaders for them. Four, four of 15 for 70 yards. The leading rusher was marched with 66 yards on the ground. Receptions as I believe Abel, leading reception with a 35 yard re reception. But we also saw a big reception there for Brayton Gordon that got called back. As Cole Shively, two of four for 22 yards. Hunter McIntyre, 23 carries, 94, 95 yards and three times he found his way to pay dirt. Nate Amson, two receptions on 22 yards. Big play tonight here for this offense. This group going to take on Adams Central next week as Caden goes down to wait the post-game speech with Coach Eunice. He'll head up here for an interview, hopefully. And we'll take a break and be right. Stay well, tuned here. If it's not an eternity, we'll... we'll <laughs> yeah, if it's not an eternity, I'll come back on and we'll hang it up. But like I said, we'll be right back. Andy O'Hara, Orion Little, and Caden Atkins here on the Triton Surge Sports Network. Stay tuned for post-game interviews.
All right, welcome back to Wright Trojan fans. Andrew here with Coach Eunice and Cade Atkins. Coach, this team put together a big first three quarters, but yet that fourth quarter, they found a way to make stops. What were you telling your guys down there in that fourth quarter to really stop off those two touchdown runs that Turabusco had? To relax, to breathe. I mean, I felt like our kids really got tense, and um, they just needed to relax at that moment and trust themselves. I kept telling them, you know, we're the same team that was taking care of business for three quarters. Relax. And, uh, you know, our, our kids did, and uh, Cole made a great jump on that pass. And you saw a couple of miscues, but yet the defense did a real good job ripping the football. You saw Farrell rip it out there on the kickoff return, and then you turn around, but yet they ripped it out on the far side against Marks on the far side there in the third quarter. I mean, granted, one was a mishandled snap for Cherubusco, but these guys were flying to the football tonight, and I think, like you said, kind of in your interview with Times Union, they got to fly to the ball, and they got to come out and play great football. And these guys did that tonight defensively and offensively. When they had the chance to go to the south end zone, which we talked before the game, that's where you're going to want to score, and those guys did that tonight. They did really execute that win to their back. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, that, that was just such an emphasis this week. I mean, I, Cherubusco, they're a very physical team, very aggressive team, and um, we felt we had to match that intensity. And, uh, you know, we did a great job with that. And, and uh, you know, the, the biggest key I felt was the turnovers. I mean, we, we talked about that, about the t we're, we felt like both teams were pretty equal. And uh, it was going to come down to who takes care of the football on a night like this. And, um, you know, we fortunately, we didn't have any turnovers. And, you know, that was a big difference in the game. I'll take that. Coach, first off, congrats on the win. Thanks, uh, nice to beat your old team, right? Okay. How's that feel? How's that feel? It feels good. Um, what did you do differently this week as the last two weeks after two heartbreaking losses? Uh, honestly, nothing. I mean, we just focused on our fundamentals. I mean, it, we, we feel like this is a team that we just have to get better because of our youth. And we just repetition, repetition, repetition. And, uh, you know, I, our kids, with it being fall break, our schedule was a little off this week. But I felt like it kind of helped us, though, too, because they just could focus on football only. Uh, it's looking like you're going to have Adam Central next week. What are you going to do to game plan for that? Well, first off, we'll have to watch some film on them and uh, see what they like to run. I'm assuming they still run what they normally do. And so they'll be a very similar offense to what we run. And um, the one thing about Adam Central is they are a physical team and they know how to win. So, uh, so bottom line is we're going to have to uh, um, prepare like crazy and get ready to take that long trip. All right, I'm good. Good luck next week, Coach. Thank you. Like we said, I want to thank our sponsors tonight, the Workman family and Farmers Drainage for their sponsorship here. We'll let you know if we're going to have the game next week. Pay attention to social media and our website if we're going to have that game next week. Coach, like I said, great win tonight. Look forward to what you guys can do next week. I'm Andrew Harris for Coach Eunice, Cade Nackins, and the Hall of Famer Ryan Limler. Until next time, Trojan fans, remember the Trojan way.